The mantra in Hollywood's fantastical world is, go big or go home, and their version of Velociraptor is the ultimate example of how absurd it could get. Because the movies didn't just scale up its size, it gave this dinosaur almost mythical abilities, blurring the lines between the natural and the supernatural, and turning the Velociraptor into a cunning adversary with intelligence that rivals humans. Clever girl. When Michael Crichton, the author of Jurassic Park, decided to use the name Velociraptor instead of Deinonychus to make the raptors more terrifying, he had no idea that this would establish the Velociraptor as one of the most infamous dinosaurs we've ever seen. However, this sudden popularity had unexpected drawbacks. The larger Deinonychus served as the model for the Velociraptors in his book and the movies that followed, leading to the widespread belief that the Velociraptor was a mini version of T-Rex. Scientifically, Velociraptor is a genus of small dromaeosaurid dinosaurs that lived about 75 million to 71 million years ago. This was a family of feathered coelurosaurian theropod dinosaurs that thrived from the Middle Jurassic to the end of the Cretaceous. You might remember this scene from Jurassic World where the Velociraptors towered over Chris Pratt. Movies tried hard to portray Velociraptor as a giant, monstrous creature that could devour any living creature within seconds. In reality, it was much smaller, with adults measuring between 1.5 and 2 meters, or 4.9 to 6.8 feet in length, and standing just 1 meters, or almost 1.6 feet tall at the hips. It was approximately 8 times smaller than the raptors in the movie, and 180 times lighter than the typical dinosaur, weighing a maximum of 19.7 kilograms, or 43 pounds. The movie may have shown Velociraptor as a huge, vicious dinosaur, but according to the fossil skeletons, it was closer to a giant turkey than a dinosaur. Despite its small size, the Velociraptor had some exceptionally useful features, and its speed was one of them. It will definitely be an understatement to say Jurassic Park altered the entire anatomy of these animals. In the movies, Velociraptor have thick, bulky legs, while the tails are always portrayed broader and bulkier, with muscles that can knock things around them. On the other side, real Velociraptor leg bones were especially strong and resilient, despite being low in weight. Also, scientists discovered that the extended shin bone actually allowed for big steps, suggesting the Velociraptor could move fast. Lots of paleontologists believe it could even sprint faster than pro cyclists, hitting speeds up to 64 kilometers per hour, or 40 miles per hour. In contrast, movie raptors are often portrayed as exceptionally fast and agile, sometimes exhibiting almost supernatural abilities. They're shown darting through forests with incredible speed, leaping great distances, and maneuvering with precision and coordination. These depictions are often exaggerated for dramatic effect and to heighten the tension in action sequences. In addition to its distinctive limbs, the Velociraptor possessed additional features such as its unique jaw structure that improved its survival in prehistoric desert a detail overlooked by all movie adaptations. Even though the Velociraptor was not very large or powerful, its jaws, with its incredibly thin, recurved, and serrated teeth, could bite into flesh with the energy of a Belgian shepherd. Research indicates that the bite force was around 304 newtons. Though not designed to hunting similar-sized food, its elongated snout, which functioned similarly to a spear, was effective in capturing small, quick animals. Paleontologists believe that despite its bite force, it only used its jaws to consume prey that had already died, or tiny, swift animals like lizards and amphibians that it consumed whole. Movies often misrepresent the jaws of Velociraptor by portraying them as powerful enough to crush bone and strong enough to rival T-Rex and other predators, when in reality, they were better suited for slicing and tearing flesh. Besides the jaws, Velociraptors had other lethal weapons that made them different from what is portrayed in the movies. It is in fact the most recognizable characteristic of a Velociraptor, the sickle-shaped toe claw. It provides the answer to the question of how it managed to take down animals much larger than themselves. This claw was a powerful weapon, proportionately enormous, and maintained its sharpness. Measuring close to 3 inches, or 7 centimeters in length, it represents 10% of the total height of a Velociraptor, Having such claws can be comparable to humans being born with 8-inch blades, just like Edward the Scissorhands, but in one finger. Because fascinatingly, this claw was located on the second of each foot and was retractable, curved, and razor-sharp. Compared to the movie claws, 
they would appear at least 1.5 times smaller in real velociraptors, making the movie very wrong about those hooking claws. As shown in Jurassic Park 3 with Udesky's unfortunate fate, these intelligent creatures had very practical use for such hook-like claws. The velociraptor utilized it to penetrate important organs, such as the jugular vein, carotid artery, and trachea, resulting in severe blood loss or suffocation in prey, securing it the meal. Since we're talking about its claws, it would be a mistake not to mention the iconic scene from Jurassic Park where a velociraptor opens a door with its claws. However, in reality, a velociraptor's front claws were only 1 to 1.2 inches long. It would likely have to break its arm to turn a door handle. Not to mention, with its turkey-like size, it probably couldn't even reach the handle in the first place. Unlike most other theropods, the velociraptor walked only on its third and fourth fingers. This made them clumsy, but swift and light, perfect for their predatory behavior. It was especially useful during hunting, as their prey were small and quick. One other place this feature proved to be well-placed is during the fights. After all, the velociraptor's aggressive nature is evident from fossil evidence of extensive damage caused by raptor fights. These fights often ended with fractures, indicating brutal confrontations over resources in the harsh, cutthroat environment of the late Cretaceous period. Light feet and hidden claws were the difference between life and death. The fighting dinosaurs specimen, discovered in 1971, offers a unique glimpse into predatory behavior, preserving a Velociraptor mongoliensis and a Protoceratops andruzi engaged in combat. Initially, it was speculated that the two creatures had drowned, but soon it was proved otherwise. Originally, the distinctive claw was considered as a slashing weapon, presumed to be used for only cutting and disemboweling prey. However, analysis of the fighting dinosaurs specimen suggests a different approach. In this specimen, the Velociraptor is positioned underneath its prey, with one of its sickle claws seemingly embedded in the throat of the Protoceratops, while the beak of the Protoceratops is clamped down on the attacker's right forelimb. This positioning implies that the Velociraptor indeed have utilized its sickle claw to pierce vital organs rather than slashing the abdomen. A test of the slashing hypothesis was conducted during a 2005 BBC documentary titled The Truth About Killer Dinosaurs. Producers created an artificial velociraptor leg equipped with a sickle claw and used pork belly to simulate dinosaur prey. Although the sickle claw did penetrate the abdominal wall, it was unable to tear it open, suggesting that the claw was not primarily used for disemboweling prey. This adds more weight to the fact that the velociraptor was an efficient, active hunter capable of tackling a diverse range of prey. However, contrary to popular belief displayed by Jurassic World franchise, there's little evidence to suggest that velociraptors hunted in packs or were social creatures. In fact, it is highly possible that velociraptors ate one another in times of food scarcity and were merciless killers. As velociraptors are quite the opposite of social beings, we have seen Blue and its siblings teaming up to hunt, or in this case, save our main characters. In addition, researchers believe that, like excipitrids, they would then start feeding on the animal while it was still alive eventually causing prey death due to blood loss and organ failure. This is quite similar to how hawks and eagles hunt with the grasping motion of their dominant claws. So, Jurassic Park missed a few major details, but this is the biggest one yet. In the movie, they were shown without feathers, but in real life, velociraptors were covered in feathers from head to toe. Paleontologists have found evidence of feathers on other similar dinosaurs like Microraptor, and even a mature Velociraptor arm bone had over 10 quill knobs, suggesting it was feathered. Now, scientists aren't entirely sure about the exact purpose of these feathers, but they believe they could have served various functions like nesting, enhancing speed, or displaying to other Velociraptors. So, Velociraptors probably looked like a phoenix with its quill-like feathers. If plucking all its feathers is not bad enough, the Jurassic movie franchise even put it with dinosaurs that lived thousands of miles away. For example, in many scenes in the Jurassic movie franchise, we see velociraptors coming face to face with almost all predatory dinosaurs, especially T-Rex in intense fight-offs. This is where movies got it wrong as velociraptors never coexisted with T-Rex, at least not in the same place. While both Velociraptor and T-Rex lived during the late Cretaceous period, T-Rex was dominant in North America, while Velociraptor lived in what is now known as the Gobi Desert, which stretches across Mongolia and China. On the other hand, in the movie Jurassic Park, they are shown together, 
which makes it seem like they lived at the same time and place. But in reality, they were separated by millions of years and thousands of miles. Besides, the Gobi Desert wasn't a great place and there wasn't enough food to go around, and velociraptors had to struggle for resources in a harsh environment. Back then, the Gobi Desert looked very different from what we see now. It was warmer and more humid, with sandy dunes everywhere and very few streams. The species that made this location home were very different from what we see today, with many dinosaurs and other reptiles roaming around. Unlike what is shown in the movies, Velociraptor shared the Gobi Desert with Protoceratops, Sauronithoides, Prenocephale, Oviraptor, Cytopodi, Goyocephale, Halscoraptor, Sauronitholestes, Sechuanosaurus, Bagaceratops, Bactrosaurus, Pinacosaurus, Minotaurosaurus, Shavuya, Gallimimus, Gobosaurus, Shamosaurus, Carusia, Estesia, Khan, Nemegtomaya, Gobiraptor, Tarkia, and Cychania. There were other animals as well. So contrary to the movies, the Velociraptor's habitat was not a tropical region, but a desert region, and was incredibly diverse, where it lived and flourished for millions of years. But even with its awesome abilities and features, it eventually disappeared from the Gobi Desert before the asteroid wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. If you think the Jurassic franchise couldn't get more things wrong about dinosaurs, wait until you see what they got wrong about the T-Rex in this next video. Enjoy.